Welcome back. This is the third video about how to use the Type 575 transistor curve tracer. This video will focus on FETs, more specifically JFETs, and how to find the transconductance or forward transfer uh, characteristics of a JFET. The 575 was never really made to measure JFETs, and you can tell because there's only five base volt steps. Now that's not really enough to get a good picture of pinch off voltages um, so a lot of times what people do to get around that is to stick a 1k resistor between the base and emitter terminals. So you can see here between the base and emitter terminals is a 1k 1% resistor. I 3D printed this little adapter here and uh, it just has a 1K resistor inside with a socket and the new labeling. So the drain goes to the collector terminal, the source goes down to the emitter terminal, and the gate goes to the base terminal. That 1K resistor turns the base current steps into base volt steps. One milliamp is one volt. What I've got displayed on the screen right now is a 2N5458 transistor. It's an N-channel JFET. On the vertical axes we have drain current, on the horizontal axes is drain voltage, and the steps are gate volts. Like I said before, one milliamp is one volt because we have that 1K resistor. In order to find the forward transfer ratio, um, of the JFET, you have to take into consideration again your Q point. Just like I said with the BJTs, um, and if you haven't seen the BJT video, I highly recommend watching it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that is similar. With a JFET, the more drain current you have, the more transconductance, which is the forward transfer uh, of the JFET, the less drain current, so the closer you get to less drain current, you have less uh, forward tr transfer. Um, so when you're doing it, you have to know what your drain current is. You probably know that a depletion mode FET, zero volts makes it full conduction, pretty much uh, a short circuit. And when you apply a negative voltage to an N-channel FET, you're actually pinching off and the lowest voltage with the lowest current uh, drain current that is usually one percent of the full-on current is your pinch off voltage so what we're actually seeing here is unlike the BJT which went up from the bottom and went up to the top the curves if I ground the grid you can see it actually starts up at the top and goes down when I decrease my steps switch here you'll see it actually goes it goes up as I increase more you will see more and more go down because we're pinching off the channel in the transistor itself with our negative voltage now you have to keep in mind that with an in-channel FET you have to use the negative going steps on the stub selector not the positive going steps but you keep the collector sweep in the positive position because we're applying a positive voltage to the drain but we're applying negative steps to the gate of the transistor. The GM or transconductance, transadmittance, whatever you learned it as, is found with this. It's very simple. You'll recognize this symbol from the last video when I talked about the AC current gain of a transistor, of a BJT transistor. And all this is, is it means a difference. So a difference in drain current is divided by a difference in VGS, which is your gate source voltage, so your gate voltage. And that will give you a pretty long decimal uh, number that's commonly measured in MOS, M-H-O-S, which is basically ohm. If you look here, it's ohm spelled backwards. But because we're uh, in the decimal places, usually it's micro MOS, 
Sometimes you'll see Millie Mose as well. There's a conversion to Siemens, which is the more modern unit, but uh, I tend to use Micromose. It's what I learned um, and what I'm comfortable with. So GM for me is measured in Micromose. So let's get right into taking some measurements. So we want to find the transconductance of this FET. Now we're going to pick a kind of arbitrary operating point, um, but like I said, you'll already have an operating in point in mind when you're designing a circuit, so you'll know where the transistor will be sitting at idle, so you'll be able to gauge what the transconductance is based around that point. So I'm going to take two points, because remember we need a change in drain current. So I'm going to select this point here, this step here, and this step here, because my operating point, let's say, is this center step. So we want to, we want to go a little bit outside of that step so that it's in the middle. What you take then is your difference in uh, gate voltage, which in this case we are at 0.1 gate volts per step. So if we count down, because this is negative, remember there's zero, right? So there is negative 0.1, negative 0.2. Between these two points, it's negative 0.2 uh, gate volts. If you plug that into the equation, you get uh, 0.0013. So that's uh, 1,300 micromoles or uh, 1.3 millimoles if you want to go with the millimoles. And that's it. That's as simple as it could possibly get. Uh, um, a change in your drain current divided by your change in gate voltage. Now, why isn't it measured in HFE or beta like with BJTs? because that's current gain. What we have here is a voltage controlling a current instead of a current controlling a current. So there's a difference in units. We have volts and we have amps. So you basically need a new unit to talk about those two units combined. And that's where the MO came in. And it's just the upside down omega symbol and the word ohm spelt backwards. Very creative. I hope you found this video interesting. I know it was shorter than the BJT video, where in the BJT video we actually went into DC current gain and AC current gain. Now, I'm still uncertain on whether FETs have an AC and a DC transconductance. So the only information I could really find was transconductance and transmittance being interchangeable. And this was the only gain equation I found for finding the actual forward transfer uh, ratio for FETs and if anybody knows if there is an AC and DC if there's a difference between the two for FETs as well just like there is for BJTs please feel free to leave it in the comments below. I hope to see you in the next video where I will discuss different kinds of diodes on the curve tracer.